If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with prostate cancer, one of the most challenging decisions that you face is whether to treat that cancer with either surgery or radiotherapy. Now, both are proven, both are effective options, and both cure men of their prostate cancer. But these treatments are not the same. And in this video, I'm gonna help explain three clear reasons why some men should choose surgery rather than having radiotherapy. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. Charles Schubert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located here on the Gold Coast in Australia. In the following video, I wanted to highlight for you three key reasons why you might be better off with surgery rather than radiotherapy to manage your specific disease. As always, if you get benefit from this video, give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. And if you have a story that you're prepared to share, please leave it in the comments section down below. So surgery provides a definitive way to stage someone's prostate cancer. And what I mean by that is that the process of surgery removes the entire prostate together with the seminal vesicles, and that is then sent to the lab. The lab then performs an analysis and determines specific characteristics of an individual's prostate cancer. We can tell how big or how small someone's cancer is. What is the Gleason score or the ISUP grade of their cancer? So that really tells us on a scale of less aggressive to the most aggressive where someone sits. We also find out the pathological stage, which refers simplistically to whether or not someone's cancer is contained within the prostate or there is ever any evidence microscopically that someone's cancer may have extended through the shell of the prostate. We determine if there is cancer at the edge where we have cut to remove someone's prostate and also whether or not some of the escaped cancer, if present, has extended into the adjacent seminal vesicles. Now, the importance of this information is it provides for us more accurate information with regards prognosis, so how we think that man is going to do longer term, what is the probability of cure versus recurrence, and that pathology will also guide us as to whether or not we think someone needs to have additional treatment. So for many men, it removes this degree of uncertainty and provides clarity for men in a more definitive way. With radiation treatment, we actually never see the whole prostate. And the way that we manage things is based on, in many ways, the best estimate of what we think is going on within some, someone's prostate. Reason number two is that following surgery, PSA becomes a very sensitive and very specific marker of recurrent prostate cancer. Now, you may be aware of some of the ambiguity that exists in the diagnostic realm with regards PSA testing, in that it can go up if someone has a big prostate, it can go up if someone has inflammation or irritation of their prostate, and it can also go up if someone has cancer. So it lacks specificity in the context of diagnosis. But when someone has had their prostate removed, their PSA should be zero. And if their PSA is not zero at any stage in the future, it tells us that we have recurrent cancer. So this makes follow-up very accurate, being able to use the simple tool of a PSA. Now, the counter to that is that with radiotherapy, men obviously keep their prostate. And when you keep your prostate, they do produce some PSA. And so the definition of recurrent cancer then becomes a little bit gray. Following radiotherapy, there is something called the bounce effect. And that is a situation whereby at one to two years after surgery, it's possible for us to see a rise in someone's PSA that is actually not associated with recurrent cancer. Obviously, that can cause stress, it can cause ambiguity, can be confusing for some men. Now, the way that we diagnose recurrence when men have had radiotherapy is using criteria really called the Phoenix criteria, which is to say that we add two points on top of the Nadia value to say that someone has recurrence. The Nadia value effectively is the lowest point that someone's PSA gets. And so if their PSA ever goes 2.0 higher than the lowest point, we say that someone has recurrent cancer. 
So an example, if someone's PSA goes down to 0.2 after radiotherapy and their PSA in the years after treatment goes to 2.2, we say that that man has recurrent prostate cancer. Obviously, there can be a delay with diagnosing recurrence because we're waiting for that PSA to hit that threshold. Reason number three is that radiotherapy remains an available backup. Now, if someone has surgery to remove their prostate, as I indicated, the PSA should go to zero. If when we look at their final pathology, there is cancer through the shell, cancer that has grown to the resection margin, or cancer that has extended into the seminal vesicle. If that man experiences a change in his PSA at some stage in the future, we then have the option of adding radiotherapy onto the surgery with a view that we mop up any cancer cell that could be in the location of where the prostate used to be. So this is called salvage radiotherapy, and we use salvage radiotherapy if we think someone has local recurrence after they've had surgery to remove their prostate. Now, the challenge is that the converse is not true. So if someone has radiotherapy as their primary treatment, and in the years after they have radiotherapy, we think they have local recurrence, it is very rare to offer that man surgery to remove his prostate. It does happen every now and again, but we tend not to do it. The reasons really following radiation treatment, the tissues around about the prostate, and most notably the bowel, which is directly attached to the backside of the prostate, those two structures can actually become fused or densely adherent to each other. Now, the challenge is with surgery, if we go to remove a prostate in an irradiated field, we run the risk of tearing or splitting the bowel, which runs the risk that men may end up with a colostomy or a, a diversion for their bowel to try and allow things to heal. The other challenge that we see is in the context of a salvage radical prostatectomy, <clears throat> the risk of urinary incontinence is not insignificant either. So it's the two potential complications of a bowel injury and significant longer term urinary incontinence that really prevents us for, from offering salvage radical prostatectomy in the context of local recurrence following radiotherapy. Now, in this video, I've highlighted three reasons why surgery might be preferable to radiotherapy. Now, that doesn't mean that for every man with prostate cancer, he is better suited with surgery rather than radiotherapy. Moreover, there are definitely certain circumstances where men are better suited with primary radiotherapy than they are with surgery. And that tends to be in men as they progress through life, so older men, men with more significant medical comorbidity, so more significant medical or other health issues, those men really who don't want to have surgery at all, and other men who have certain higher risk factors. It's important to take away that there is no universal best approach or better approach when we're dealing with surgery and radiotherapy. And it's important to have a chat with your urologist or your local doctor about the pros and cons as they pertain to you. As always, if you get benefit, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to know more about your prostate, please have a look at this video here or alternatively this video here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.